Dion Wynn. Hi everyone, welcome back, maybe welcome for the very first time, and this is the eighth episode in my series So You Want to Get Into, and this is a series dedicated to the filmmakers you may or may not know about within world cinema and indie cinema that, well, basically deserve your attention, and basically in this video we will talk about the best entry points into that director's work. And today we will be discussing Kelly Reichardt, I think one of the most phenomenal indie filmmakers that has graced the American screen for many a year and someone that has truly kind of grabbed my eye since the very first moment I ever watched any of her films. And the way we're gonna do this is I'm gonna to talk to you about my initial experience, my first ever film of Kelly Reichardt's, then we're gonna talk more about her style, her subtext, a bit more about her history, and then I'm gonna give you three recommendations, and those recommendations will be the masterpiece or the highest rated film on Letterboxd right now, the second is my personal favorite from the director, and the third will be the all-rounder, kind of the film that encompasses everything that kind of is the director's oeuvre. So enough talking, let's get to it. So my first ever experience with any Kelly Reichardt film was actually Night Moves in 2013. I actually didn't really know who Kelly Reichardt was at this point, but I was very attracted to this film because Jesse Eisenberg and Dakota Fanning were both starring in it. And in this time, I thought they were making really interesting choices, especially within indie films. And I went into this film and I just got this amazing slow paced environmental thriller that really just grabbed my eye because the visual splendor of Reichardt's kind of style is really prominent in this film. I really just love the way that she kind of looked at the world without using words. I think there's a sense of artistry within the kind of movement of the film, but also just the way that it's kind of paced. I know that Night Moves hasn't had the biggest audience, but some people really love this film or some people actually hate it. But what I loved, it's just the way that she built tension within its framing, very slick editing, and the spatial awareness of what's around us. And I think what really pushes this film even more is this kind of push beyond the mainstream because it really is about ecofeminism which is something that you don't really think about in this kind of early 2010s but I think Reichardt has kind of pushed this kind of message for the vast amounts of her films because I think gender is something that she really focuses on anyway but with Night Moves I really just immersed myself in this experience and it was such a engrossing kind of experience. And after I actually finished Night Moves, I kind of had to look more into who Kelly Reichardt was, but this is when I kind of found Wendy and Lucy Meeks cut off. These were the two films that I thought to myself, wow, this director is something quite special. And it really was, I think, a really interesting entry point, but not the one I will be recommending in a bit. Now to the style and subtext of Kelly Riker. The best way to describe her, she's a minimalistic realist, and that's what I'm gonna stick with. And a lot of her films kind of follow the same kind of pattern, but I think within its ambiotic scenery, it does change depending on what she's kind of looking for. And there's a deeper psychosis to a lot of her plot lines, even though it's very basic within its kind of execution, the deeper methodical side of it is always quite eye-opening and I think that's what I love. And also there's always kind of these social political tones about Americana and the American dream within a lot of the films, especially because she focuses mainly in the Pacific Northwest in the Oregon area, which is ironic because she was actually born in Florida. So it's two different kinds of landscapes and people. But I think the wilderness, the mountains and the lakes kind of give you this very transcending experience that will actually make you think a lot more about what you're watching and maybe a little bit more about yourself. And I think her first film, River of Grass in 94, is not perfect, right, Kat? But it kind of shows to you what she had to bring to the table. And then it took her almost 10 years to make another feature film, which is an absolute shock. And she says, and I quote, it's because she was a woman. And this was the studio system back then. And as an independent filmmaker, she needed finance. And she just went on and pushed to get her own films financed. But she actually made a 50 minute short film called Ode in 99, which is a really interesting film about forbidden romance and I think it kind of is potentially her most romantic film in many ways but it's such an organic exploration of what it is to be in love 
and it just shows to you also how tender she is with her framing. And then after this, we go into the Bush era where she was making uh, Iraq-based kind of war short films. Uh, then A Year and Travis are very kind of eye-opening and shocking kind of short films about the period. And I think they kind of say a lot within themselves. I think they're definitely the most kind of face-fronting kind of political message she has because the rest are kind of burrowed deep in her films. But within this one, it really is an eye-opening kind of experience that is, it's quite... Yeah, it's quite hard to, to kind of think about, especially Travis, that one hits hard, really hard. Then in 2006, her film All Joy was, I think, probably one of the most profound experiences I've had in a film in the last 10 years. Because when I watched it, I was going through this period of, oh my God, why do I not have a house? Why do I not have kids yet? Why do I not have a steady job? Blah, 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 blah. And this film just told me actually, well, everybody has a different path in life. And I think I really enjoy this kind of like two men going into the woods and kind of reconnecting, but also learning more about themselves. And I think sometimes you need to kind of get that step back. I didn't actually have to go outside to think about it in the mountains like them. But that film kind of made me think a lot more about who I am and what I'm doing and am I making the right choices and right now I would say we're getting there <laughs> so it's always good but this is the thing a lot of her plots they kind of float around they never kind of give you all the answers straight away it's more about the immersive experience with Rykar and you get this quite heavily with Wendy and Lucy in 2008 starring Michelle Williams and uh, Kelly Rekhan's dog it's really one of those films that hits hard and it's, I think, one of those interesting kind of drifter kind of movies which don't really give you the answers that you want, but the experience that you go on with Michelle Williams' character is something quite harrowing, but we'll talk about that one a little bit more later. But when it came to Meek's Cutoff in 2010, it just showed how good... Kelly Reichardt can be when it comes to genre cinema. This is a phenomenal kind of Western that looks at women on one of these kind of carriage wagon gangs and their experiences. And I think it's kind of uh, a daring film in many ways, especially in this kind of 2010s, early, you know, Weinstein era where women did not really have much representation. But I think Reichardt kind of showed what it was to be a woman and this sense of kind of having your own artistic liberties within this film just shows you the power of her and this is the thing you'll see Michelle Williams in quite a few of her films and I think Michelle Williams's performances in all of Reichardt's films are absolutely astounding. Over the last maybe five six years Reichardt has really kind of established herself you know she's only made when we're on eight or nine feature films now and I think with Certain Women in 2016 it just showed to you how powerful her voice is. Certain Women really just kind of grabbed me with Laura Dern's performance with Kristen Stewart with Michelle Williams. I thought it was just one of these kind of really beautiful kind of short stories blended all together and this connection of, of kind of womanhood was just really profound and especially looking at women in different stages in their lives I think it's Probably one of Rykar's most personal films and it's really one of her most accomplished works because it just shows to you how much she just cares about literature within her films. And I, I love that about her because she does use a lot of kind of fiction to either inspire or base her films on. It really just takes you back in time most uh, in these kind of settings. And I think th this kind of grey pastiche kind of colouring that certain women has is just absolutely beautiful and I just love in all of her films how kind of characterization is so important especially within the framing because she loves to focus on people and how they kind of react to situations and when you go through a lot of the films you see this heavily in each and every one but every time it just feels a little bit different or a little bit kind of newish and refreshing but you never kind of feel bored that's the thing about Rykar a lot of her films are not dull they are films that kind of open up new worlds to you maybe worlds that you might be familiar with but she gives you a fresh perspective and this kind of sense of 
this natural minimalistic realism is what really makes her one of the best American filmmakers in the world today. And we obviously then go to First Cow in 2019, which a lot of people consider to be her best film. But we'll talk about that one a little bit later. But the thing is, Reichardt might not have had made 20, 30 films, but every film she's made has a meaning, it has purpose, it has a representation or a message about American history, about how the American dream has changed, <clears throat> and how kind of the attitudes of humans are changing. And I, this is the thing, I, I love how she, there's no sense of bias within her films, the kind of gender fluidity of kind of focusing on masculinity at some times, some focusing on kind of the female experience, it all kind of comes together so beautifully and it's a very elegant and very poetic kind of film and I truly admire her so much. Now then, to my three recommendations to you. And the first one is the considered masterpiece or maybe the highest rated on Letterboxd right now. And I, ooh, I kind of, I don't agree, but I don't disagree with this one. But First Cow is that highest rated film on Letterboxd right now. And I thought it was one of the kind of most deeply touching and emotionally gripping films I saw last year. It was one, of, it was in my, top 20 of 2020 which considering the amount of films i watched i think it says enough for me but i think it really just kind of reinvigorated my love for watching kelly reichardt films because i had kind of watched quite a few at one point and then push it away and come back again but i really fell in love with her kind of sense of pristine kind of backdrops, the emotionally gripping narrative, this amazing message about integration and immigration and how vital it is for any kind of nation and the importance of kind of multi multiculturalism. It really just ingrained so much into me. And that sense of the American dream is feasible for anyone and working with other races and minorities is something that will work for you and will enrich in everybody's lives. It's such a humble film about a goddamn cow and two friends who are making biscuits. It's such a simple <laughs> plot, but there is so much layers to it. It is beautiful to look at. It's beautiful to gaze at. It is on movie for free right now. It's been out allegedly since 2019, but most people saw it last year. And some people even saw it this year because it came out in the UK this year. But my God, it is a fantastic film and if you just want to feel warm inside again, it's a film for you. Right, to my personal favourite and it has to be Wendy and Lucy and I will be bluntly honest with you, this is probably my favourite Michelle Williams performance ever in cinema. I'm sorry, great showman, but I have to stick with my heart here. And this is a gut-wrenching, isolating film but also very character heavy. I think Michelle Williams carries this film so much with this heavy burden that she carries. There is just no kind of foreshadowing. There is no sense of explanation of her past except for one phone call that we get. And it just builds this kind of momentum and suspense that you just don't really know where it's going to go. And I think Lucy, the dog who was Kelly Reichardt's dog, just kind of resembles life within within this. I think it's a free, she was a free spirit. And I think within Wendy is kind of this really repressed person who doesn't really know where they're going. The sense of drifting through America is just something that we see quite a lot. But I think what Rykat does so well with this film is that she just encompasses this kind of confusion that we have within our lives so much. And there is one scene with Michelle Williams that really just, it's it's really haunting and I think you will know if you've seen this film, but it really just stuck with me. It still sticks to me to this day because I think it's one of the most kind of fear inducing kind of experiences that anybody can have by themselves. And I truly think that Wendy and Lucy is just an amazing film that really deserves a lot more attention than it gets. It's actually available on Amazon Prime most of the time. It is right now as of recording of this on the 29th of July, 
2021. So please give Wendy and Lucy a go if you haven't. And, and my final choice for you, the All Rounder. And I've talked about this one quite a bit already, but I just kind of want to re-emphasize it for you. And that's All Joy from 2006. This was kind of like her first feature film after a very long period of time after River of Grass. But this, the emotional rapport of this film will grab anybody from the very beginning, I think, especially I think when you're a bit in the, your 30s. It's one of those films that really just emphasized a bit more for me. But this is the thing, as I've talked about this before, it's it's all about the spatial awareness in this film. It's kind of the setting, how nature is bigger than you, how the, how the universe is a thousand times bigger than the problems that you have. But during that moment, those problems and kind of, issues that you have are just so vitally important to you because you you are you are in the middle of something you are in the middle of an experience that potentially might change your ways it might potentially make you realize what you have it might give you an epiphany of what your life should be and i think through the whole process of all joy this is what you get and i think the thing is and i say this to a lot of people that have problems sometimes you should never compare yourself to anyone you are your own person and you do your own thing and and I think All Joy is that film that kind of re-establishes this kind of momentum within your life. Again, this is another film that is on Amazon Prime, but I would wholeheartedly tell you, watch this film and see if it will have an impact like it did on me. Right then, so that was my video. So you want to get into Kelly Reichardt. I hope you enjoyed it and it's inspired you to watch some of Reichardt's films. If you have seen any Reichardt films, please let me know in the comment section below what your favorite one is. And potentially tell me what is your favorite moment in a Kelly Reichardt film if you want to go a bit deeper. And thank you very much for watching this video. Hello new subscribers, hello old subscribers. I will be back with more video reviews for you over the next couple of weeks, including Julia Ducournau's Palme d'Or winning Titan and also Paul Verhoeven's Benedetta along with a flurry of other videos. So thank you very much and I will see you in the next one.